Hi, Sanjay. It's very nice to meet you. I like all of your questions. I'm going to just recap on these and then going to get connected. Okay. So, okay. My goals for the session are to understand my higher self, where I am in my soul development and where I am going. Okay. My experience is current and in the past lives. Also, what I need to do to resolve current issues at hand with my life. Okay. Any thoughts from any spirits that have passed? And who is my guide and do I have a guardian angel? All right. Okay. All right, I'm going to get get cozy here. Let's see what comes. All right, Sanjay. Okay. Well, there's an outer space scene, just the stars and the dark. And I'm standing here as a reflection of you. And I have like, I don't know if I'm like trying to catch the stars with a, with a net, but I have a net is what it's like on a post above my head. And there's this energy like a black waterfall that comes on down. It even looks like black hair that comes on, on down and it shrouds me. So I'm inside of this now. And I can't see the stars or the dark and my net is really no good. I'm just sort of shrouded in this. This is difficult. And this net is going to be useless. <laughs> That's for sure. The net is not the right tool. Because I have to figure out how to... I have to understand my surroundings here. What is this shroud? And I'm going to have to do it without any objects. I have to do it from inside myself. I have to find it within me. So you will have to find it within yourself too. Without the use of any tools or objects or anything. This is actually a really good thing that's happening because it's teaching you how to become a master. And the only way to truly become a master is not to rely on anything that is out there because all the answers that you're seeking are inside yourself. And when you find a way to work with that inner self, now you are the guru, right? You are the master. And so that is what they're showing me right now. This takes a long time. I mean, I see you sitting down and really trying to figure this out. Obviously, you could just step out of this, right? And I tell you that. Well, why don't you just step out of it? But you can't hear me and you can't understand how truly thin this shroud is. And how easy it is to actually just step out of it. It's just like walking through like a like a um, a curtain of hair. <laughs> it just happens to be really thick, and you can't see through it. Uh, but you you aren't registering how how simplistic it is. It seems more complicated than that. And so you're sitting down and you're trying to find an answer. The net is actually disappeared, so it's just you. Okay, so I hear one of your guides say, say um, what is keeping you separated? And the guide, sh guide shows me these stars out here and the shroud that hides the stars from you. And it's as if these stars are also all the ancestors, all the spirits that love you, your higher self and so many other higher selves, right? Angels. And this guide is 
definitely has a male vibe. I'm, I'm not going to directly look at him because I want to stay in the zone with the message. Because he's here to teach you how to how to move past this barrier so you have access to all the stars. And the stars, again, are all the spirits and the souls, all the ancestors, all. But you're still inside here and you're trying to figure it out. And it seems too complicated. But I really feel you will find something inside yourself in this lifetime. Okay, so let me see if I can take a look at this guide. <laughs> All right, well, everything is for a reason. So I, I'm trying to turn my head to look at him, but I get to only see him from my peripheral vision. So he's like standing over there, and I have to try to figure out what he looks like from a side angle. And he's just made out of white, like literally like white paint. And... He has a total structure, but it's kind of, um, seems really silly or awkward. Like it doesn't make sense in a way, but it's working with shapes. So he has a big circle for a head and then he's like a rectangle here and then an even bigger rectangle. It kind of comes down and it's like shapes that come together to create what would be the form of a body. And he has really like awkward looking eyes too, but they're just made out of shapes and it's just like somebody took an ink pen and, and drew it all on a, a white sheet of paper. And that's what he looks like. He is really, I don't know what his interest in the color white is, but there is something about the color white. I keep feeling somewhat mesmerized by it when I experience him. So I'm asking him, and I, I will say, I just keep thinking about white out. Like, um, shoot, I made a mistake. Oh, I'll just get the white out, and then I, it's gone. It's going to be fine. <laughs> so if only we had white out to, like, white out some of the parts of our life, and then we just redo it. <laughs> well, you can't work with a white out um, in the way that you want to when it comes to life, you know? And if we make a mistake when we're typing on a typewriter... We might be able to work with that, but <laughs> so there's something, something like this that makes me think of this. And I'm trying to get him to tell me more about what the color white means to him. Mm. This is another new message is start, starting to formulate here, but it's tough to access. And uh, the next experience that I have is you're still sitting down and there's just a little circular like floor and then the dark shroud is sort of like a tent around you and there's the stars out there I can see this and then there's a huge energy block between you and this white <laughs> white out guy <laughs> with the shapes so why is this here like what what is this block here and let me just keep experiencing this. This block is not easy to remove. And did you create this block? I mean, you're creating all of these experiences in order to challenge yourself. Somehow this message gets through to you inside this shroud. And you have an epiphany, and the epiphany says, I am blocking myself from all of the stars. I am blocking myself from my guides. How, I mean, it's an epiphany, it's like an aha, and it's full of energy inside of you. And this is incredible because when you have this moment, this epiphany that you're blocking yourself, somehow it gives you uh, an understanding of how to override that. And all these blocks, all these blocks are not a conscious choice. They're coming from deep down inside. 
So we don't know all the reasons why our deeper parts of us are resisting and creating different structures and things like this. But you have a deeper essence that, you know, is creating blocks, right? Um, could be connected to ego and who knows whatever else. But you are becoming aware through just some natural instinct that you're blocking yourself and you have a natural instinct or... Um, a feeling of how to overcome it and it has no explanation there's no textbook understanding there's no explanation it just seems to be a feeling it's a feeling that helps you understand how to overcome it and it I don't even know if I want to use the word overcome because that means that it's a challenge that it's a task that you have to accomplish right to overcome it but with this epiphany, there's nothing left to do because the epiphany comes with um, an, an upgrade of some kind. So now you've already overcome the blocks and it was just seemed to be really instantaneous. Hmm. But the whiteout guy says, um, what are you resisting when all I'm asking is for you to turn and face me? but yet you're still trying to see straight ahead. And now the message is that the stars are so far away. And how will you ever reach the stars or the messages from the stars? So now there is yet a new illusion here that you've created, that you are too far away to understand or to hear or to access. And your guide is like, but why don't you just acknowledge that I'm here already? Why don't you just turn and look at me? It's like, why are you resisting? I'm right here. And he tells me that he can only come to you when you choose to acknowledge that you are aware and you are ready to work with him. Because there's something of his um, gift to you that has to do with helping you with the some a spiritual development a psychic development but you have to acknowledge his presence otherwise he's going to stay in in the sidelines and he's going to send you information and you're going to process it as you are ready to master that you're going to become sensitive to it at different points in your life um, but now here we are at this point in your life where it's time to acknowledge that you do have spirit guides this one in particular is really wanting you to acknowledge his existence. <laughs> and it's it, even me telling your deeper essence this, you still just don't want to turn and look at him. <sighs> what is it? Why? <sighs> There's a reason why. <sighs> still trying to understand what that would be it sort of reminds me of you know how you have if you do something wrong when you're a kid and your parents are going to get really mad at you you don't want to face them right you're because you're ashamed you know like like you didn't mean to you're just a kid right but the parents get angry and and so you have this inner internal like turmoil and you don't want to look them in the eye and you don't want to face them and you put your head down that sort of thing so it kind of reminds me of this that if you if you finally turn to acknowledge him um then you would you would be acknowledging that you were purposely ignoring him <laughs> and you don't want you you would rather have a, a reason why you weren't able to see him or know about him but you did all along and you did it on purpose and you don't want to if you turn to acknowledge him now you have to face the reality that you were ignoring him on purpose <laughs> but you're making up a lot of excuses it's okay, you're human. We all do stuff like this. So I'm telling your deeper essence that there's no reason to be ashamed at all. Everything in your life is is on time, is in perfect balance, is, per, is exactly as it is. So you don't have to expect more of yourself or ever have expected more of yourself because where you are right now is exactly where you always needed to be or should be you're in the perfect place at the right time. So it gives you leeway to know that you can now take a look. 
And there is a bit of a discomfort I'm picking up on. And it's a, a little bit of fear. And it comes from um, the unknown, I guess you could say. How do I you know, how do I work with this guide or what is, you know, what is this going to be like? How do I know that I'm talking to this guide and not some other spirit? <laughs> it's kind of like that, okay? So your guide says, so you're acknowledging that I exist. You acknowledge that I am here. You've been whiting him out. That's what this is. You were whiting him out because you weren't ready yet. So you are now. <laughs> and you're a bit embarrassed and ashamed because you've been whiting out this soulmate that you love so much. Because our spirit guides are like our best friends, you know? And it's not its not like you. It's not, it would never have been... Um, you, you wouldn't have been like happy to know that you did that because it's not your, per your style, but you did do that. <laughs> so, so he's again wanting to emphasize, so you are ready to acknowledge me now. Because he's not going to put words in your mouth. You have to state that. Hmm, what is it that you're saying here? You are stating it, but it's in like like the tiniest like fine print and really quiet. And but you're you're like mumbling it hush under your breath. <laughs> really tiny little words like on paper. Almost like you can't even see the fine print here of what you're saying and agreeing to. Because of that fear of there's a nervousness about it. And that is what also creates the resistance because you have to decide when you're ready and you haven't been ready yet. Well, you're getting there. You're clearly getting there. He's okay. Like you can white him out for the rest of your life. It's just choice. You know, it's just a lifetime where you get to now try it again in another lifetime. So there's no disappointment here. There's never a disappointment. There's only the disappointment you would have in yourself. But there's no disappointment from your spirit guide in you. He just wants to know when you're ready. And when you're ready, he'll be there. And he already is there. He always has been there. And you can white him out and it's not going to offend him. <laughs> he loves you. But he really would like to show you um, who he is. He really would like you to see because there's love here. There's a love. And like family. Like, um, I mean, there's just pure love. <laughs> it's the most warmest love there is. And you're starting to realize the spirit guide isn't about intelligence. Like, um, it's not just about communication. It's about love. So the spirit guide is about love. And so any type of fear you have that the spirit guide and what is my spirit guide going to say to me? How do I hear my spirit guide? You know, just um, it's just like clear all of that out because you're um, the way that you're approaching your thought process on what it might be like to communicate with your spirit guide is slightly off. So your spirit guide communicates with you through love, through the feeling of love. And through the feeling of love, then you will receive understanding. It's not like a dialogue goes crazy in here. It's you receive love and then you understand. You, you needed to hear that. Um, the shroud is gone, just so you know. So you're just sitting on a circle, um, just a ground in the universe. And the stars are here. And then... Um, what Mr. Whiteout <laughs> is getting closer and your your fear is dissolving because it love feels love is a safety that you need to experience when it comes to interacting with spirits and it is the safety that's how I translate um, balance so if I communicate with any spirit in the universe 
I don't listen to what they have to say as what tells me if they're um, balanced or not. Um, I explore the way they make me feel. So if they feel like, you know, love cannot be manipulated, otherwise it's manipulation. So there is no manipulated love because there is a frequency and it's very obviously something's not right here. But love is like a river of light and it just flows through you and through your heart and that's when it's real. That's when it's like the most powerful it could ever be. And that's the type of love the spirit guide is sharing with you. And that's the type of love you're ready for. And you need to know about this type of communication is what it's like to speak with your spirit guide. It's pure love. <sighs> okay, so he's much, much closer now, maybe two feet away from you. And you haven't necessarily turned, but you are becoming more welcoming of him. Which is a huge step forward because we're talking about becoming a master, right? So um, mastering yourself, mastering your fear, mastering your mind, mastering the illusions. There's so many things to master. Um, so you just do the best you can, right? <laughs> we'll be mastering even when we're masters, we'll be still mastering. <laughs> so there's like never an end to this mastery. But you are mastering, okay? And you need to know that too. And you're doing an amazing job. And part of what comes next is, is no, is, has to do with, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual development, psychic development thing. And it comes with feelings, comes with safety, and it comes with getting to know your ancestors, your spirit guides, angels. There's always angels around you. There's a bajillion angels around you every single day. There's bajillions of angels around me. There's so many angels. And I, I never limit yourself to just one. <laughs> you want bajillions, okay? <laughs> so yes, yes. And you should acknowledge that for yourself. You should say, okay, I'm surrounded by bajillions of angels and spirit guides, lots of them that love me, soulmates, many higher selves, <laughs> lots of ancestors. And soak in that love, right? Sponge in that love. That's just step one to your psychic development is it all starts with love. And you're ready now to be the source, the, the centerpiece, um, the channel of receiving and sharing that love. You can take this as far as you want in this lifetime. I mean, Mr. Whiteout, who's, he, he, I don't even want to call him that, but he's still covered in white because you're not choosing to white him out anymore, but he's still a bit of a mystery. But, um... He's telling me that you could go as far as you want in this lifetime. It just depends on how you're, you conquer yourself and your own beliefs of what you're capable of and any fears you have of the unknown or the spirit realm. You can go as far as you want in this life. You could be a channeler of spirits. You could be a, a powerful healer. You could, um, I mean, you can do anything you want. I mean, he's telling you that you will have access to anything you want to experience spiritually, psychically in this life. But that's only as you conquer yourself. So you have to keep mastering yourself is what he says. And I mean, he shows me that you could go as far as Buddha and further. It takes mastering yourself, but you have access to being anything you want to be here, psychically, develop, psychically developed, like you could be anything. I mean, he's showing me this. You could, you could be a miracle worker, like he's showing me this, but only you are holding yourself back. And again, he reminds you that it starts with love. And everything that you build your psychic development on 
is going to be built on love, not fear, the feelings of love. And you can trust in love, okay? Because that's all you're choosing to work with. And when that is your intention, my intention is to know what love is. To know what it is like to feel the love of my spirit guides. To get to know the angels in my life. To feel and receive more of this love and to translate this love into meaning for myself and for others. I am ready for this. You should state that. You should actually state this out loud, but speak it from your heart, not from your mind, but from your heart. And it's going to open doorways for you. And you're going to feel it in your soul when you say that. Because you actually deep down inside have been waiting to hear yourself say that for a while now. (laughs) And you're going to feel that affirmation is going to move you. And it's going to feel real. It's going to feel right. Okay, let's see. Okay. You still haven't, still not facing your guide yet. I want to see what, I want to see what, What is the next thing I need to to say? Because I really want to see you face your guide by the end of this session. The next thing is you have to believe in yourself too. And what you're capable of. And you have to give yourself permission to see yourself as gifted. Okay? Even if you don't, even if you feel like you're just learning the ABCs of how to channel or something of this nature or how to be a healer or whatever, you, you actually could very quickly develop. <laughs> that, that, is the, that is very clear in what your spirit guide is saying here. So you have to believe in yourself and you have to give yourself permission to, to see what you're, to state what you're capable of. And, and to feel that. Everything, again, comes from love. So you don't have to... It's not as if you're saying, um, I'm a master healer, and you've never healed anybody in your entire life, and then you just go off of some saying, right? When you say, I'm a master healer, you are opening your heart and saying, teach me. Because there is no time. So you could say, I want to become a master healer, But why? You can say, I am a master healer because you are a master healer, right? Even if we would define that, well, I'm a master healer in the future or some other lifetime, then not this one or I'm not right now, you don't want to do that. You just want to say, I am a master healer. But when you say it, um, you are welcoming that reality to to happen in your life and for the, the love and the awareness to um, enlighten you, to teach you, to share more with you by choice. Because you are actually ready for this. <laughs> You're ready for this. You're almost there. 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 Gosh. You know, this whiteout guy, he really reminds me of Archangel Metatron, actually. (laughs) Archangel Metatron is, is, is just, I keep getting the thought of Archangel Metatron. And Archangel Metatron is one of my, totally one of my angel guides. And I didn't even know him. He just, I just, he somehow seeped into my world. And once he did, I was... It was like I was changed for life. And I I went through a series of experiences to get to know him. And uh, they were challenging. They were very challenging because Archangel Metatron is, he will challenge you, but he will in- ignite and enlighten you. He is wise. And um, he teaches me how to develop my gifts more uh, effectively because 
he's always shrouding himself. So it's hard to tell who it is. <laughs> so um, then it's sort of like, surprise, it was me. <laughs> so he's teaching you how to um, really get t in tune with um, what you're experiencing inside yourself and to really um, go by that. Don't to not to manipulate the way things really feel, you know but just to go by what it is that you truly feel inside about what you are experiencing. This is what I'm truly feeling inside. So I'm going to call this Archangel Metatron. Wow. You need it. You needed to hear that. Uh, when I say this is Archangel Metatron, suddenly there is a white flame that ignites in your heart. And like you're like a rush of um, like whoa um, energy, wind or inertia or it's like whoa, um, it just goes around you. And I feel like you, you two have a t total connection here. It's very clear in this reaction, and the awakening of that connection is big. Is big is big for your soul and for the experience of being human and how that's going to ignite more for, for you and your human world. And Metatron tells me that um, he's going to help you with security and safety and um, working with spirits and guides and angels. And he wants to comfort you in the process so he asks you to stand up and <laughs> he shows me um you know what is like a big old santa claus type like um and i'm like a little kid and it's like like he's like the gift master you know <laughs> it's like hug me <laughs> wow the nicest person in the world like that cares about kids you know that's kind of what this feels like um that's like a big hug from a big loving um being and and it's like uh it's like a really big being, like um, a pudgy one that has lots of girth. You get the really big hugs out of the pudgy people, you know? It's like, yes, the best hugs in the world. There's just so much there, you know? <laughs> so much to squeeze. So the hugs are happening right now, and it feels just so great. Like, wow, <laughs> this feels so great. And it feels so loving and understanding and compassionate and he says that you're worthy of knowing and connecting with all of these stars and there's just there's too many to count he says you're worthy of of knowing them all for yourself and he really wants to introduce you and he loves you very much i mean that he's really emanating how much he loves and cares about you and he holds your hand and you're much like a child here because you're there is vulnerability but there is trust in the parent okay which is trust in this archangel to guide you and help you and metatron just takes you out into the stars to introduce you to what you've been resisting for a long time and it's it's love it's your own gifts it's discovering who you are and what you're capable of it's letting go of fear and it's allowing the love in pure love this is so beautiful Mm. I'm just sort of still in this beautiful energy. It's just so lovely and peaceful, relaxing, breathtaking. Mm. You're so ready for this message. <laughs> You're very ready. Mm. Okay, Sanjay, thank you so much. What a true honor 
to do this journey for you and experience this message is so beautiful. Okay. All right, I hope you have a great day and anytime you want to connect again in the future, I'll, I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, take care.